So check this out. Recently Clockwork released a handheld calculator called the Pico Calc, and of course I had to have it. It's a handheld calculator with a cool twist. It comes with a 4 inch IPS screen, a backlit keyboard, and a Raspberry Pi Pico as a core module to power this cool looking calculator. So today we're going to dive into this cool looking device and see who benefits from using it. And to actually see if this calculator is actually worth having in your collection of devices. This is the unboxing gadget. Let's dive in and explore. Let's get it. Alright, so before we dive in, let's see how this came into fruition. Now if we take a look at the social media pages for Clockwork, we can see that this device was released on March 12th, and that was also the same day I decided to order it. Now I didn't want to end up in a surprise situation like I had for the Clockwork Pie, where the device came months and months later on. But surprisingly, my frustrations were ironed out with this one because the Pico Calc came within like two weeks, which is great. I got the device quick and I'm ecstatic. Now, the social media pages and the information around this device says this is a cost effective MCU terminal, which means its core, which is the Pico 1 microcontroller, allows you to do quite a few different things on this device. Based off what they say, we can do Pico Mic, running emulators, listening to music, and of course, calculating different math problems. And you also have the advantage to create your own stuff. So you can use basic programming language to create your own different things on this device, which is pretty cool. So this is it's definitely a learning tool, which I don't know if I have time to get into everything, but I think this is a really cool device to learn all different types of open source projects. Okay, so now that we have an idea of how and what the Pico Calc is, let's build this thing out. So if you're familiar with clockwork devices, you know they do a fantastic job of showing step-by-step -step how to build the devices, kind of like Ikea. I mean, Ikea gives you the instructions. They don't really put any words to it. You just follow the diagrams and boom, you got your couch, sofa, dresser built. So it's kind of like that. Now the packaging is pretty consistent across the lineup. So I'm assuming the guide and everything will be too. Okay, so getting everything out the box, let's quickly build this thing. Now first up is the speakers. Placing them in the right location on the outer shell is pretty important. So make sure you take off the tape and anything and line the speakers up pretty good. Now there is a protective film around the speakers um, I'm not sure if you can keep it on or take it off, but I don't think it really matters. Okay, so next we have the screen. Now, don't do like me and accidentally touch the screen and get fingerprints on it and then have to wipe it off. <laughs> so make sure you, you know, use the outer edge of the screen and place it within the shell so you don't have fingerprints on it. Okay, next we have the keyboard, which is pretty self-explanatory. Just placing the keyboard in the outer shell and popping it in and you're pretty much good to go. Okay, so next we got the bread and butter of the Pico Calc, which is installing the main board with the Raspberry Pi Pico 1 core module. So it's pretty easy. Just make sure you have all the pins firmly pressed down and it should pop right in. So once you get that, we can move on to attaching the screen to the main board. Now for this, you do need to unlock the latch and firmly press the thin orange sheet in the slot and lock it back. It's kind of tricky and it's kind of hard to explain, but it's kind of like just unlocking it, pressing it up and then locking it back. So. Um, once you get that, it, it should lock in and you should be good to go. Okay, and then lastly, we have the easy part, which is attaching the back shell and the, the outer screen and everything. Now for this, I'm gonna fast forward through because all it is is just installing the screws, pushing everything together, getting it all lined up, and you should be good to go. And then after that, you should have the Pico out and you should be able to turn it on and you're good to go. All right, and I almost forgot the batteries. So I didn't have laying around any of the 18,000 650 batteries, but I did have some in my U-Console and I'll pop those into the Pico Calc. Okay, so now that we have the device built, let's dive into the software. As this is my first time using the Raspberry Pi Pico, so setup actually took me a while. To get started, let's jump to the GitHub page to lay everything out. So the Pico Calc supports a lot of different things, but in this video, I'm gonna show you how to code in basic or how to set up basic, playing some NES games and listen to some music with the Pico Calc. Okay, so, Pico Mic. If you aren't familiar with programming, the Pico module allows you to write code in Microsoft Basic. And Microsoft Basic is kind of like the precursor to Visual Basic now, which is .NET today. I actually code in Java, so .NET isn't my strong suit per se, but I've always heard how Basic is the foundation of Microsoft software. Now with Basic, you can communicate with a lot of different hardwares, like LCD panels, SD cards, and a lot of other stuff. But I'm gonna leave that exploration up to you. Today, let's just focus on getting Pico Mic up and running so you can code in basic. So by default, the Pico Mic should be installed. But if it's 
not installed, you do have the option to add PicoMite to the device by flashing it using the bootloader mode. And to do that, you need to hold down the button on the back of the device while inserting the USB cable at the same time. Now both have to be done at the exact same time or it won't show up on your computer. So once you have that done, you should see a drive called RPI-RP2 on your computer. Now this drive will allow you to interact with the device. And from here, you can update the Pico Calc, you can reinstall software, you can flash different UF2 files to the device. Now, I did download a few ROMs and they run pretty smooth. Um, I downloaded Mario, Pac-Man, um, Yoshi, and they all run pretty smooth. Now, with the Pico Calc, the Pico memory only allows you to have size less than or equal to 44 KB. So you can't have those bigger games from NES, but you can have the smaller ones and they run just as good. Now, to actually play the games, you have to use the equals key as a start and you have to use the left bracket as the A button and the right bracket as the B button. But that's it. I mean, once you get that down pack, you can just easily play the game just like you would when you're, you console. All right, so lastly, let's talk about the Pico mic firmware. So with this, you can interact with the Pico Calc by running different applications, playing with the LEDs on the back, or just coding in basic. So to get started, you do need to put the Pico Calc into that boot mode. And by doing that, you have to hold the button on the back and plug the USB port in at the same time. And then it should pop up, your, pop up on your computer. So once it's on your computer, you do need to go into the terminal and find your serial port for your device. But once you find it, you should be able to enter a screen mode, which will allow you to interact with the Pico Calc. And once you get the Pico Calc in that mode, you can actually go to the Raspberry Pi Pico SDK examples and just throw different applications at it just to test out different things. So if like, for example, I'll just throw in the Hello World application and then it should pop up on your screen or your computer mimicking exactly what you would see on the terminal. So it's pretty cool. The possibilities are unlimited. All right, so there it is, the Pico Calc. And honestly, I think this is a go. I think this might be my favorite clockwork device. I think the price is good for 75 bucks. It has a whole lot of learning potential. And I actually think you would get used out of using this because of all the things you can do from playing NES games, to doing calculating functions, to running basic, to using Pico Mic. I mean, it has all types of things you can do on this device. So drop a comment below and let me know if you're gonna pick up a Pico Calc. The shipping times have improved. So I think this device is a go. Either way, thanks for watching guys. This is the Unboxing Gadget. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.